Hello everyone and welcome to a last of first challenge, replicate Lewis Hamilton's back to front jobs that I did last year at the Belgian Grand Prix when he had his grid penalties and well I know it's the first video in a long time but thank you very much for watching anyway if you are watching I do apologise about the time now it has been. Brandon anyway, we're going to chuck it straight into the race and we gear up for the lights. Two lights, three lights, four lights and five and we go at Belgium. And with the manual start, we actually get quite a good start. And we managed to take Verline off the line. We're backing off just to give ourselves the inside into the source. See our flag's going on and we get absolutely pinged to the corner. We get four legal overtakes. So, have to desist immediately, which is understandable and fair, but quite irritating. Gutierrez taking a pin full amount of time to uh, let us go by. But we're not going to go side by side with Marcus Ericsson. Through a route. This cannot go well, surely. And no, it does not. Despite the yellow flags telling us to not race. Uh, accidentally squeezing into the barriers. And Grodron's had a huge collision out of Radion for God knows where the reason. And we're 19 out of 20. Verlang's way back, but we're struggling at the moment. Uh, to explain, we're on a prime tire strategy. Try and go as long as we can. Uh, Hamden actually started on these set of tires as well in real life. But starting the mediums. Because... I think it's copied by a red flag there. But anyway, uh, going through Rivard, we see that Harry Anto. Jeez, was he in F1 for the one? It's hard to remember. As we fish sell out Rivard, we've got through no name now. Uh, yeah, clearly Harry Anto is holding up the pack. But I will tell you, when I was driving um, at the time, my gosh, I was struggling. It's the first time I've driven on the game for quite a while. And I just couldn't make the car um, stick to the floor. As you can see through porn now, I was actually all over the place. Um, what's the setup that I use around Belgium? I turned the tire brushes down to the floor and you could clearly see it was having a bad effect on the balance. But anyway, on to lap two and we absolutely tower by the TIs with the Merc power kicking in there. Uh, so fabulous, up to 17th place with the purple first set to book. Oh my gosh, we were struggling. As we go through the Fanny Chicane on that lap, we actually make a huge mistake. Well, I wouldn't say huge, but you know what I mean. And we allow good to to go back through. So he is now there, able to uh, regain 17th place off us as we now um, go into a slick stream as we now head down towards Blanchman and the bus stop. And uh, we get some yells again. Felipe Nazda appears, has had a huge smash for whatever reason. We're still going to take Gutierrez uh, free Blanchman and that's really up to 16th place. And oh, that's a bit of the twist. We have the safety car out. And as you can now see on the uh, MFD, I quickly decided to flick to some medium tyres. Because I want to stay on a prime tire strategy to go as long as I can. And uh, now we are boxing. Uh, I should tell you at this point, I knew there was rain coming uh, later on uh, during the race. So putting on primes for primes should enable us to uh, get through, uh, through the most distance uh, rather than having to revert to an option tire strategy or even a qual tire strategy. And well, as we all know, in real life, the Super Soft was quite a crumbly tire at Belgium. Anyway, uh, Gutierrez seems to be in the pits as well. I think that's so strategic because he went from qualities to qualities. I don't know why you'd do that, frankly. Super Soft was the tire you wanted to be in real life, but never mind. Very life, for some strange reason here, decided to have a massive lockup going into a Le Corme under the safety car. I have no idea why. He was driving erratically uh, during the safety car for some whatever reason, but I shall gloss over that. Um, one thing you'll notice though is we've got a lot of positions um, as the top 10 bin their quality tyres and tried to go into a set of race tyres, mostly. There was some that went from super soft to super soft, so God knows what. But anyway, as we go for the first restart, hint, 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 as we have to back up slightly, not knowing where the safety car line is, um, into the bus stop, and we wait for it to go green. So over that, yes, and you pass Mel and immediately Magnus for some reason didn't pick under the safety car, despite the fact he was on the super soft. So he's going to be absolutely screwed as we go into lap six of the Belgian Grand Prix of a 50% race, but you know, never mind. And we lock up into the sauce. Um, I turned the wing down by two flicks on the front because it's like, Ugh! and I was getting so much obviously that I need a bit of stability. I can handle the, the low grip issue just so long as I had some stability as we do a little cheeky cut uh, through a rouge. But the run we got through Radion is allowing us to just catch signs and just catch him napping. It's like he's in a McLaren the Honda. It is that bad, but my up is geared for straight line speed. I should leave a link to the video where I actually got the setup from in my description. I think it was a TRL Limitless setup. So, you know, steel league racer setup going to be all good. But for some reason, despite that, I didn't shake off size. Now, if you were on Fresh Primes, he was on slightly used options. But the fact is, though, is I was completely struggling despite the fact I'm in a Mercedes, he's in a Toro Rosso. I 
I haven't played the game for a while and it was clearly showing like the one thing you'll see in this sequence is that I just could not say shake or signs for whatever reason. But at least it could be worse. Nico's picked up a puncture. He's coming in. Nico has come into the pits. He's in the pit lane now. Unlike the Real Badger Grand Prix, Rosberg having a lot of problems there for some reason. Now we're DRS enabled, but it's still by the proximity hammer. Just still can't seem to say cut, say cut. Yeah, share cut, thanks, Junior. It was <laughs> incredibly annoying at the time. Like, I just, and I couldn't understand why, how I in the Mercedes couldn't share cut at And I promise this is ultimate AI, so it isn't me just being completely rubbish. But you, know, you also see as well, he's, you'll see purple lap times going from other drivers. And I just couldn't match them, although they were on like soft and super soft, and I was on mediums, but that's just just yet. I don't think you'll have noticed that Raikkonen managed to uh, stay out in front because he started on the option tight but however we made a holic to the bus stop just there and this loud side scout onto the back of us but to be honest it was no major issue we were far enough ahead anyway because our trail of speed was helping us going from Cotter Pearl Ferrer to Blodge uh, One in the bus stop so we're all right there. Metal certainly the fastest one of the race there as we are on lap nine now. Anyway. I was going to say Anyway, good to have the weather report from Jeff. And yes, five minutes time, it's starting to look very gloomy already as it heads towards the Panish Chicane on lap nine. Anyway, you'll notice I was in fifth because I made a hauling to the recording. And I couldn't catch a, a big mistake that I had at Blanchemont, but yes, I couldn't get a word in Edwards there because strategy changes, the whole work, safety car again. I, I don't think anyone actually retired because there's still 20 runners. But anyway, uh, I noticed that we, the rain was coming very soon, so I thought, you know what, at this stop, which I would have stopped at anyway, even in a normal dry race because it would be advantageous. So I would probably consider going on to the options and then going back to my first set of primes to like make sure I can get to the end. So, Double stop. But anyway, we had an incredibly slow stop uh, here for some reason. I mean, it was other three seconds. I can't see exactly because uh, the monster I've got here is a little small, but that's my own failings. But everyone else is going on to quality so they're clearly gambling on the rain. Not less than their long, but the fact that it'll also go green very quickly, which is quite an interesting thing in itself. Um, but out of the pace, I absolutely struggled on the inters on the dry tra track, unsurprisingly, and let's get one to fall too far back. Jeff was talking a lot. I know that strategy changed, by the way. Uh, but Ricardo got permission to go by me, which was quite frustrating. But it was a worthwhile decision to go into Interstate as we go for the restart the following lap. It's absolutely pouring it down. But so much so that on the restart, those on slicks just can't have the confidence to put it down. Whereas I can, I'm just like, and I'm just waiting for the safety car line to appear up so I can uh, go racing again. So it's very costly. I could have gone here, but I was just taking my time just to make sure I safely passed the car now. We got cars are steaming into the pits as we uh, manage to go back green. That Jeff lad is talkative as ever. <laughs> uh, but yes, we are absolutely going to steam past Button and then with a slightly hairy overtake get Magnussen, we narrowly avoid the wall for the sports car pit lane. But anyway, up to P1 and as it settled down, because let's be honest, I had quite a dull lap. Like, there was nothing else to describe. Um, it, we're going to move us, Alonso. Yes, Alonso. And it's becoming Honda and then Raikkonen. Uh, this wasn't to say I had a trouble-free run, though. Uh, for stats, you couldn't even go slap through Blanchman for a start. Yeah, and there were no more scheduled pit stops. All was kosher. Um, I was struggling for pace, to Usually, intermediate conditions are very favourable for the player in this game. But my setup was just pants. I shouldn't have changed the tyre pressures, really. From the original set, but still limits it had. Um, so yeah, I was struggling a little bit, but yeah, the gap being about 18 seconds, it wasn't really going to be too much an issue. I just had to stroke it home, but I had to start pushing on because I was losing about a second and a half a lap, I believe. But anyway, as you can see at the top left, that Raikkonen has managed to pass Alonso at, uh, at this point, and he's managed to get up his way to second place. I mean, having Alonso behind me is not going to be too much of a problem because. I'll be able to block in the corners well enough, and let's be honest, a Mercedes, which is a bullet in a straight line, compared to a McLaren Honda on a default setup, you can guess which way it's going to go, really, can't you? So, 
I was quite okay, but as you can see there, I was having to push right on uh, through No Name and Puon. Anyway, I kept making mistakes though, uh, as you can see there through my sauce. I absolutely mashed the braking and it just didn't go very well. I can't even comment on it very well either. But anyway, you see, the outcome of all my silly mistakes as I make yet another insula sauce on the last slap as you cut to. That's come from about 18, 19 seconds. Thank you, Jeff. Till about four seconds. I was uh, uh, making an absolute horlicks on it. I was trying to do everything to lose this race, seemingly. Anyways, we're going through up air ridge. Can't take that flat in this weather. I then get an absolutely huge tank slap, and God knows how I managed to save that. Scurrily, uh, doing some cadence throttling. <laughs> That's not such a thing. Uh, Paris is out the race. On the last lot, that's not really going to affect our race. Not a lot is going to be made from that. And I've got a serious Ragnan issue, as he's right behind me. He's giving me absolute pressure on this last lap of the race. He really wants by. He really wants to win his first Grand Prix for many moons, even if it is virtual and it is for absolutely nothing. Then again, he's a Belgian specialist. Because that's the least of my worries, Jeff. Because that's the worry I really need to know about. But yes, um, anyway, yeah, Marken is right in the back of me. Um, you see with the percentage armor and through the mirrors as well. He's had a good run out of Puan compared to me, and it's like Tavazanet all over there again. With these two chasing each other right to the very death in wet conditions. Although Tavazanet was quite different. That's, you scholars will not have to suck over Jeff now, because. That's quite annoying. And I confess at this point, my recording side to see, so I had to make yet another recording. Hence, we're going to skip later into the lap, but very briefly. He's riding all over the back of me. As uh, we're about to go through Bloodman, he looks about to going to have a look there or a dive. For some reason, we've got yellows. I've no idea why. Oh, Jeff. Do you ever shut up? But yes, uh, we've eventually managed to do what Lewis Hunter couldn't do in real life. And we've equaled John Watson's record. As we've won the Belgian Grand Prix! Thank you, Jeff. Well, so there you go. On real life, Hamilton got from 22nd to 3rd. And here, we've managed to go from 22nd to 1st. I must admit, though, strategy came into it. Uh, we got very lucky that we managed to use the safety car to our advantage. And the fact that the AI played it very poorly, we should have never won that race. But, you know, sometimes that's the way it is, and you just got to take it as it comes. But yes, there you go. That's a victory from 22nd to 1st. I must admit, though, this is a very easy track to um, pull back to front challenges. I remember doing my back to five lap challenge all that time we got, and I managed to get from 22nd to 1st in the first lap. It was like, uh, what do we do now? But yes. Um, I guess I'm just going to be rambling now, so I shall end it there. Uh, thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure. Uh, to come take my first video in several months, <laughs> which is quite something to say. Uh, so, yes, um, I shall see you whenever I see you next. Goodbye.